Not bad. Well, thank you guys for coming out to episode 32. I am proud to be here with our beer sponsor for the night. You guys like beer? Put your beers up. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, this is the man of the hour. This is David Libner, and he's actually behind drinkboard.com, which probably everyone around here has already heard of, but just in case they haven't, let them know what, what it is. Uh, Drinkboard is a really simple idea. It's a mobile gifting platform that is designed to allow one person to buy a friend a drink or a bite to eat anywhere in the world. So uh, we put together a collection of carefully curated bars and hotels, restaurants and lounges to create a really nice mobile marketplace so anyone can go shopping. So if I was in New York and you were in Las Vegas and it was your birthday, I could just go in, click Boom, Las Vegas, find a place, buy you a beer and deliver you a mobile gift card. Right, go into an awesome place, get a beer. And, and the cool thing about this is that it actually gives you that like one-on-one -on -one feel that's almost been lost in, in the way media and like all these apps have gone. That used to be how you bonded with people. You sat down, you had a beer, and now all of a sudden it's like virtual gifts everywhere and this kind of goes back to the square one, right? 100%, we feel that it's a, a community-based solution, that we're, we're building a solution that's good for consumers and merchants, that uh, we're, we're driving people into bars, into brick and mortar locations uh, that aren't in that, in that space. Right, and the product, I guess you won Tech Cocktail Awards, is that right? We did, we, uh, we won Vegas Cocktail a couple weeks ago and uh, you know we're downtown, we're Vegas, and we're, uh, right. we're glad to be a part of it. And beer, perfect fit. So, yeah. okay everybody, make sure you check out Dream Drinkboard.com. He's also Facebook.com forward slash Drinkboard app. And of course, you got luckily the Twitter handle, Drinkboard. Yeah. And uh, any place else they can go check it out? Yeah, you know, if you go to Drinkboard right now, Drinkboard.com, and you sign up, we're going live in a week. And uh, anyone who signs up now, we're going to be sending out some gifts when we go live. We'll let you all know. And we're really excited to start gifting and to start mm -hmm. it here in Las Vegas. Beer related gifts? There you go. We'll, we'll, sign, we'll find we'll out find when we out. go live. We'll find out. <laughs> sign up now. So, all right, Dave, thank you very much thank for coming you. out. We appreciate it. Thank you. Certainly so. Now, I've seen the mascot running around downtown, and um, I'm quite intrigued as to what it is. It's the $1 office space campaign, and I have Chris here to tell me all about that. And tell me about this mascot that I've been seeing photographed downtown. <laughs> yeah, um, that was a creative idea from our creative genius uh, to put a guy in a dollar costume to promote our dollar office space uh, promotion that we're doing. Uh, we're doing 1,000 square feet of space of our downtown loft office space in the Holzman Loft. It used to be an old bread factory. We're giving 1,000 square feet away to a promising tech startup for only $1 a month. So that, do the math. That's Above. really, really yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it's in a really awesome location of seeing the beautiful neon sign out the front. So. It is awesome. And it you guys awesome. have been there a year, right? We were there a year uh, mm -hmm. this month. Yeah, yeah, happy anniversary. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a, been a great spot for us. We, uh, we used to be located near the airport. We travel quite a bit with our firm, but we decided to, to trade in convenience for convergence. Like We wanted to be here in the downtown area. We wanted to be where this, this movement was, and we're the firm for the downtown area. So all the tech startups, if you know of anyone, we're not looking for just local talent. We're looking for, we want this to go national. There was a write-up in the Austin American Statesman uh, about a week ago. Uh, concerning our little uh, project and so this is a national thing and so we want a promising tech startup to, to come join us in our space. Awesome. So, so how can they take advantage of this? Like how do they get to be chosen to be able so to have that space? So what you do is you go to uh, go to our website, theglengroup.com. You'll see how to uh, upload a video to Instagram and uh, we'll have uh, uh, some judges uh, stakeholders here in downtown we have some national uh, <laughs> judges as well and uh, we have about a panel about 10 judges who will select who the winner is very very cool yeah. very cool it's good. How, how many times do you hear Tony talking about collisions over convenience you know she fits right in yeah I, I want like office it. space for a dollar that sounds awesome yeah, well, yeah. Now you got it it is it's awesome I mean we blow dollars every yeah. day right? 75 cents yeah here, fifty there. office. yeah so great use it to to pay rent Okay. Well, I can't wait to see which startups can actually be able to get in there. So I'll be keeping an eye on this one. Keep an eye on that. I think we're actually going to uh, reveal the winner right here on this show. Come on. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I didn't know. That was next we build tonight. Yeah, so. Awesome. We'll, we'll do call. that. We'll keep an eye yes. on it. Thank Please you. Please do. Next, we have uh, Alethea, and she's going to talk about the music scene at the Gold Spike. Yes. 
Very exciting. It's uh, basically the first downtown project, um, brand new venue um, that has uh, offered music more than once a week. We start off with a day here, a day there, and now we're building on to three. Uh, we look forward to seeing maybe five days of live music uh, starting mid-September. Uh, we started off with a uh, kind of showing off all our jazz talent uh, here in Vegas. We have great people like Nick Kittle, uh, Justin Peterson, Mike Gonzalez, all uh, showing off their talents Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, we also brought in a great band called Hail Amano, awesome reggae band, um, which soon we may have doing all Sundays. Um, it'll right, be our cool. reggae Sunday night. Very nice. Um, but we're also bringing bands in like uh, American Cream, uh, The Clydesdale, Dusty Sunshine, um, just a lot of great, great local talent, and soon maybe possibly even some national acts. So there's a lot to look forward there with, with live music. Yeah, That'd be great. And this is the music that's right around uh, Winnebago or whatever it is, right? The yes, Airstream, it's the, the Airstream. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of made, the, we've now included some lights and made it a little more stage oriented, but yeah. we also have some wonderful DJs inside, some great. Uh, Live talent such as Two Tenderoni, Pay Mater. Uh, we have Wisdom, Eric Camacho, and nice. they're there every weekend Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. We have uh, live music outside 10 to 1, and 10 to 2 are the DJs inside. So I yeah. love it Stop because by. if you have a beer, if you walk around like one side of the building, you can hear the music inside, and then once you walk around the other side, you can hear the live music outside. <laughs> That's kind of been something that I've really yeah, liked. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, don't stop the Sundays because we hang out here on the patio. You oh. know, like we can hear from the porch. Oh, right really? There. So yeah, keep it. Make sure you it bounces just get off some that binoculars and, and, and yeah. Flashlight at us every once in a while. Right. Right. Yeah. We'll send it. Some more code messages up. down. Yeah, I like smoke it. fire. Well, right. thank you very much for organizing that scene because it's definitely yeah, it's turned around that corner. Excellent. Yeah. And where can really they check out what artists are coming up? Do you have a website where they can hop on and look? You can look. Well, we always send out in Ogden Peeps, uh, okay. but we're soon to be forming the music series that's attached to downtownproject.com, nice. which will be you know announcing all our different uh, events, whether it's at the Gold Spike or you know any other new events coming up or. Um, pop-ups, which we'll be doing at Stitch Factory and other downtown project uh, properties such as like work in progress and whatnot. Everything will be found on Music Series. Yeah. Fantastic. Look forward to I being able to read about that. You're doing a great job. Oh, Appreciate thank you. you coming thank out. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank, thank you for having yeah, me. Thank you. on tech events because we're obviously very engrossed in the tech scene here and this is downtown podcast but this time for the events segment we thought we would focus on things that are outside of tech so you know walk away from the computer and maybe check out some of the other really cool meetups and events that are happening downtown and the first one that i'm going to talk about is here's the pitch now have you done any public speaking before dylan well i have done a little bit of public speaking and most recently i've been getting critiqued on my public speaking because i just joined the Toastmasters, mm -hmm. the very first time, which happens just right down at the user lib. So uh, first thing we want to talk about was the Toastmasters, um, the Vegas Young Professionals puts it on. And um, what's cool about this is it happens right down at the user lib. And the whole time I've been living here, I didn't even realize it was right downtown. And what they do is they give you a chance to um, speak in front of people. They have different people who watch you and they categorize like your ums and your ahs and like your body posture and a lot of the stuff that's really important for somebody who is pitching a startup. Um, and this week what they have is they're going to be focusing just on pitching startups. So anybody who's still looking to maybe get more funding or even people that have been funded and want to just really solidify their message, get it down to just a few words, should probably attend this event because they're going to have Mr. Andy White, who might have been killed by the clowns earlier. We're not too sure. <laughs> We'll see. But we have Andy Wright and our one and only director, Adam Kramer. Both of these guys are going to be there to help everybody who's pitching kind of critique and um, learn more about it. So, um, yeah, but you can go to TicketCake.com and you can sign up to RSVP for free. And come it is it for free, which is the coolest thing about that event. So thank you for definitely yeah. highlighting that. Cool. The next event coming up is the Las Vegas Canyoneering Meetup Group. Now, Ooh. I feel like canyoneering or expert canyoneer is something that I want on my business card or on my resume. Yes, it sounds me too. like kind of adventurous. <laughs> so this meetup group is very cool. The next time that they're going to be doing like a, a canyoneering expedition is September 28th and October 5th. So it's like a two Saturday event. And essentially you get to do two different kind of canyons and you get to learn how to descend canyons safely and uh, expertly, which is very cool. I'd never even heard of this group before. So I was really excited to hear about it. So the first day they're gonna do Lone Mountain and the second day 
day they're going to do the sheep range. It's very, very cool. Now, it's only $245 for that double day event, which I think is really excellent value. You get to learn things like um, the rigging techniques and on rope skills and all sorts of stuff like that. So super invaluable. And again, you can put expert canyoneer on your right. business. September 28th and October 5th, they're both Saturdays. And you can go on the meetup on meetup.com to find out more. Engineering. Now, Dylan, if you were to choose between Battle of the Year, Rush, Prisoners, or The Wizard of Oz, which movie would you want to watch out of them? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we'll ask the audience. Uh, what do you guys think? You, if you, out of these movies, which would you rather see? Battle of the Year, Rush, Prisoners, or The Wizard of Oz? So raise your hand if you would pick Battle of the Year. Can you know this movie? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's a contender. We'll see. We have a Rush. Okay, all right, parts of the room. One for us. How about prisoners? <laughs> okay, two. Whoa, if Wizard of Oz doesn't get many hands, I'm gonna be surprised. But how about Wizard of Oz? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Totally what I think Wizard we made the decision for him, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We Absolutely. Did the voting, but yeah, that's. So I heard that. I don't know the others, really. No, I actually but, don't know the others either, but Wizard of Oz is definitely a personal favorite of mine. Probably all passed up on a great movie. <laughs> Fell for it. So if they're watching, we may have actually helped them vote for the movie. <laughs> Essentially, it's the Las Vegas Movie Goers and Meetup Group, and they're going to be meeting up next on Friday, September the 20th at 7 p.m. They're going to the drive-ins, and that's the West Wind Las Vegas drive-in, and they're actually going to be voting on like which movie to watch. So they haven't decided yet, but if you go to their meetup.com event, you'll be able to figure out which one you're going to be watching. Uh, they're going to meet at 7 outside the drive through ticket booth and the, they have ticket specials for 650 which is really awesome so I reckon that's a cheap night out and you can bring chairs and all sorts of that stuff if you don't want to just sit in the car and I actually think that's really cool I mean yeah, the drive-ins are a legacy in a lot of towns including Las Vegas and I think we should try and keep them alive with that so again that's the Las Vegas moviegoers group. When was the last time you went to a drive-in? Back when I lived in Melbourne town, we have two of them left. In, no, actually one of them now, because I remember the Dandenong one my mum went to shut down. Mm. And um, we kind of cheated. We stayed around for the second movie, and we just stayed in oh, the yeah, lot, yeah. and then we watched it. But yeah. Stuff you in the trunk and get you in? Kind of, yeah. We, we, that's we how do, do in the USA. <laughs> I think they... No, 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 Australian Melbourne stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we tend to treat our friends a little nicer than that. <laughs> That's great. All right. Okay, so I heard the circus in town. It's true. Yeah, this is really cool. It's the first annual circus garden party, so it's the first of its kind. And I don't know, a circus and a garden party sounds like a really awesome combination uh, to me. So it's for the Create a Change Now, and they're fighting childhood obesity and encouraging better health in uh, children with their eating. And if you go to our Downtown Podcast Facebook page right now, you can get a discounted ticket for this. And uh, you can buy tickets off Ticket Cake, of course. And uh, basically, it's an event with things like cooking, live music, a silent auction, like a circus play area. They're going to have some really awesome featured cuisine there for the kids to try and, and to learn how to cook. So we have Bradley Ogden's Hops and Harvest, Rachel's Kitchen, which is one of my personal favorites, uh, Poppy Den, uh, DW Bistro, and uh, the Farmers yeah, and Artisan cool. Market. So really awesome. I kind of feel like you don't have to be a kid to enjoy that event, but definitely great for the charity. And uh, again, you can get tickets on Ticket Cake and... That is coming up really soon. Right, it goes to a great cause. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, so to get started for our last event, um, I've actually got a clue written on this sheet of paper here. So the event that we're going to talk about is a little bit of a scavenger hunt. I thought we could maybe try to see if we could figure this one out. If the audience wants to help me with it. <clears throat> what has six whiskers, snorts when it laughs, <laughs> And is running our camera right there. <laughs> I think it might be Alexia. It's Alexia, our number one. And if anybody's seen our dog, Cuz, the Cuz Cam, this is the, this is the owner. Oh. Oh. We look forward to seeing Cuz next time. Her whiskers go down. <laughs> so if that kind of whet your appetite for a challenge or for a mystery, there's a new event coming up called The Hunt. And we have Julian here to talk about that. I'm very intrigued. Why don't you tell me what that's about? Okay, um, The Hunt Las Vegas is an interactive scavenger hunt company. Um, it's kind of like a scavenger hunt, kind of like Amazing Race, but kind of all Vegas style. We bring people, tourists usually, to the downtown area, to the Strip, and they interact with various ticketed attractions. So, um, kind of the Madame Tussauds, or going inside, which is not ticketed, but Binion's, like 
take a picture of the million dollars, find the gold nugget. Um, there's quite a few locations down here, so we try to bring people downtown. They never really know the area, and then they come here and they completely fall in love. And, oh, I gotcha. You know, or it's smiles nice. from ear to ear. Sneaky plan. I yeah. Like yeah, get it in their psyche. Uh -huh. like so uh, several times a year we plan hunts just for locals only. So um, about two to three miles radius, only on foot, where other hunts can do in town car or limousine to get them on a kind of a longer or larger geographical area. And this time is going to be on Friday, August 30th, and it's going to take place for Saturday Not Vanguard, ending at Commonwealth. And we have a drink and drag, um, the toy shack, which is you have to find like the oh, world's yeah. dangerous Good luck finding like, anything in there. But they have <laughs> the like world's dangerous mine. dangerous toy. Like it was made in 1950. <laughs> it has nuclear spears. It has all kinds of chemicals. Just like anything in it. you can choke on. Oh, and it's, they just, like, it can it explode any time. Yeah. You're just like, hey, it's there. Um, and then we have some interactive uh, characters that they'll have to find, some things that keep them on their toes. Kind of like roadblocks of Amazing Race, but a little Vegas spin on it. Very intriguing. Yeah, I, very I love exciting. that people can discover things that they probably never even knew about their own town, like the toy shack and the <coughs> crazy, dangerous yeah. toy. Yes. And so we go like and that. try to speak to all the vendors mm -hmm. and find, you know, the hidden things. Now with the Golden Gate, um, basically kind of completed with the renovation of the lobby. They have the 1907 um, gaming ledger, which is really neat to see. Wow. Um, kind of like who was playing what. And then their hotel ledger, that was the home of the first um, telephone that was in the uh, Nevada. Cool. And also the first stoplight right on that corner. So oh. get them, you know, there's some stuff that they have to look up socially. Um, they can check in on Foursquare. So we try to, you know, um, add in some tech there. Yeah. I just. I want to see this dangerous toy, you know? Oh, it's, it's How kind much of lead paint can they fit on this thing, you know? <laughs> don't cool. don't let a flame. You never <laughs> okay. know what's going to happen. Uh, thank you for coming to talk to Oh, and actually, let's talk about your QR code. Okay. Right? So um, everyone in the okay, audience has a little flyer on their seat, and there's a QR code in the back. So um, you can scan it. Usually, we are using Ticket Cake, of course. So most of them will go to a Ticket Cake site, but there are several in the audience that receives free tickets. Ooh. So um, go ahead and scan that. Free tickets free to the ticket, scavenger hunt. There's a, a few instructions on there. You can just let me know, and we'll have one reserved for you at Will Call. Great. So people who are watching back home can also log on to Ticket Cake to buy tickets? Exactly. Great? So we have a Ticket Excellent. Cake site, and um, www.thehuntlasvegas.com, and then it links right to your Ticket Cake. OK, and let us know if anyone in the audience gets the free one anytime. You interrupt the interview if you They're need to. They're all busy scanning their yeah. QR codes right now. Scanning. So, okay, well, thank you very much for coming thank out you. and talking to us. I appreciate thank you. it. moment you've all been waiting for. Ah. So our next guest is a consultant to creative organizations and an award-winning business journalist. Besides that, he's a very in-demand speaker, regularly delivering keynotes at major events such as CES, Big Omaha, New York City Creative Week, and on many college campuses nationwide. And he's the co-founder of the Ignition Lab. And I guess Toastmaster too, possibly. So put your hands together for Antonio Neves. Thank you. All right. Dylan, Dylan, you forgot to mention that I can bench press 185 pounds 13 times. No, no, no. I ignored it because I didn't want to get embarrassed. Please. That's what happened. Okay, so let's start, let's start with your uh, concept of allies of glory because when we're during our pre-interview, that's the thing that, that just really stuck with me. Yeah, allies of glory for me simply are people that, that make you better. We have a choice in life, I think, is to spend time with, with what I like to call thieves of ambition or allies oh, of glory. Ooh. Allies of glory are like all <laughs> Americans. Uh, they're catalysts, the people that, that push you to take it to the next level. It's easy to spend time with people that it's comfortable with, that they're not going to challenge you, they're not going to hold you accountable. If you tell me, hey, Antonio, I want to accomplish X, Y, or Z, if you don't do it, if I don't say anything to you, what's the deal, Weak right? Weak sauce, yeah. Yeah, and, and so the allies of glory are those people that push you, that encourage you, that support you, that challenge you that really test you to be like the absolute best version of yourself um it's like playing with that top that top level team when i was in high school i noticed something that um sometimes athletes play to the level of the competition and when you mm -hmm. hang out with allies of glory on a regular basis you can transcend what that level of competition is and take it to the next level so basically people push you they, they, they make you better like you your a game is on when you're but, you know there's an instinct to try to conserve energy so because we live in this world where you have so many opportunities to kind of 
just sit back and you're not really held accountable, it's really hurting you in the long run. Like, you got to go out and find these kind of moments to you push gotta you. you got to find them, but it's not easy. Because, right? listen, the challenge is this. Like, there's something that's called the upper limit problem, whereas we're kind of internally set at a specific thermostat. Say your thermostat is set to, say, 72 degrees. This goes okay. back to got early it. times when we probably could get eaten by something on this planet. Right. <laughs> if you're at 72 degrees, then all of a sudden you're, you're, going, you're surpassing that. You're getting to 73, 74, 75. You're happier than ever. You're getting better results than you've ever had in your life. You're in an amazing relationship and things are going great, what we kind of naturally tend to do is do things to sabotage or bring ourselves back down to that comfortable right. 72. But, you know, if we take those consistent small steps, we can stay at those higher levels. And a lot of people always say, look, yo, you got to take that big leap. You got to take that big step. I'm a firm believer. We just got to take those small oh, steps. Oh, like these incremental. Incremental. Small steps things, lead yeah. to big breakthroughs. You know, the, what, can, I, can I go corny? Can I, can I go corny for a second? <laughs> right. Let's get corny. <laughs> Let's read that. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Um, you know, the, the metaphor I like to use a lot is that if you're like at sea level and you have some hot water on a stove and the temperature's at 211 degrees, the water's really hot don't put your hand in there uh, but if you turn it up just one degree to 212 degrees the water starts boiling so the question I like to ask people all the time is what can you do to turn it up just that one degree not the 13 or the 20 but just that one degree and one degree over and over again man it, it, it blows minds all right well if you've been asking that question to a lot of people what are some of the patterns you notice like, you know we have a lot of entrepreneurs in the audience what do you think they could do to just keep it one degree up the best thing that entrepreneurs can do to keep it one degree up is work with the best. I found a consistent trend that a lot of times people like to work with people that are at the same level of, of that they are. They, they, they hang out with the, the thieves of ambitions. They, they yeah. hire the thieves of ambition. Sometimes I think a lot of founders, and this isn't all founders, they can be a little bit insecure. It's tough when you have a baby and you're building something. So what do you do? You want to hire someone that potentially may not challenge you, that may not push back, that may just say, yes, okay, what do you want next? Right. The good entrepreneur and CEOs that I've had the opportunity to profile over the past five plus years, one thing they consistently have in common is that they work with the best. And it's not always easy, but it pushes them and it keeps them honest. Just saying, you know, being around yes men or women, it's a disservice to you and, and what you're trying to build. Okay. Well, yeah. And before we go into your history, because you have a great story from how you became an entrepreneur yourself, but let's first talk about all these people you have been interviewing. We'll play off that. I mean, you've done some amazing interviews, like a lot more than me and a lot better than I'm doing them. But tell hey, me about like, down. what, what are you great, getting? He's doing a great job. Yeah, I do. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> All you're, right. You're killing it. Nice. You're even clapping for me. Right. here, man. Right. Well, good on camera. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, looking good's only half the story, you know? <laughs> we, still have to, we still have to figure this out. So what, what are you noticing from all these interviews that's similar, that is really stuck with you and helped you with your life? Yeah, there's quite a few things. I've had the opportunity over my life to pretty much interview and profile all the top entrepreneurs you've seen on the cover of Inc. Magazine, Fast Company, Entrepreneur Magazine, et cetera, the, the Tony Shays of the world, the Steve Cases of the world, the Vi Robbie Vetranos who are here right now. Um, I can go on and on and on with these individuals. Uh, a few things that they have in common, first and foremost, is that they are focused. I mean, Jay-Z said it best in one of his songs. He said, I'm focused, man. <laughs> and these entrepreneurs are focused. I don't see the, a book that should be here, and that's Jim Collins' uh, his book, oh, Good to Good Great. Good to Great, yeah. Something he Tony mentions. recommends. It, yeah. It's a dope That's book, and something that he mentions in that over and over again is that if you have more than three priorities, then you don't have any. So these folks aren't burning themselves at different ends. They're staying focused on the mission at hand and doing that. Uh, second, uh, something we mentioned earlier, is that they work with the best. They're not afraid to get uncomfortable and hire people that are going to bring out the absolute best in them. Uh, something else, and this is pretty unique, specifically for, I think, younger entrepreneurs who are watching this or listening to this, I would say something consistent with the people who are, say, 35 years and older is that a lot of them work with executive coaches or they continue some type of personal development. They're not going at it on their own. They kind of need to be accountable to that individual who is an evoke, is objective right. and can, you know. Not, kind of that not, deliberate practice concept, yeah, who, right? who can be real with them, exactly. Right. Yeah, we can talk deliberate practice. So they, they take per, uh, personal development extremely serious. They tend to work with an outside party so they can get different perspectives on that. So those are like just three things that a lot of these top leaders have in common. Hmm. Yeah, that's really fascinating. So out of, out of them, um, which ones really stuck into your mind as like the kind of people you've tried to emulate? Um, 
I'm not much of an emulator. I think I used to be. Uh, uh, but, the, I mean, Tony, come on. We're in, we're in Vegas right now. Right, so right. Tony, Tony is, is an amazing role model and a great person to, to look at. And I think when I interviewed him for the very first time way back, and I want to say in January 2009, this is pre-Amazon acquisition, pre-downtown project, at least what I knew back then. What I liked about Tony is that Tony's... Tony and you know uh, every yeah. experience I've had with him he, you know you meet some people when they're on camera when they're on the stage they're these big kind of personalities and then you meet them off camera and they're just totally different dude seems to be who he is yeah um, I think that goes in line with a lot of the ph ph uh, philosophies of Zappos and being transparent and sharing a lot of great information with their employees but also with the community so I really dig what Tony talks about in delivering happiness what else I really love about Tony in that book delivering happiness is he mentioned something about that what I think a lot of us get wrong is that when it comes to relationship building Tony mentions that book that relationship building takes time take a long-term approach to relationship building a lot of times we meet someone and we immediately make an assumption like oh we should do business together we should make things happen like slow down bro let's just get to meet each other and learn about each other a little bit I think Tony references in the book that sometimes when he meets someone that it's obvious that yo we can work together do some good things together that sometimes it takes up to two years up to two years for something business-wise to come out of it. And what that is, is taking like a V approach to communicating. Yeah. A V approach meaning you start extremely broad. Let me tell you a little bit about me, what I'm about. Yeah, and yeah. then slowly but surely, you get focused. A lot of people want to go like straight in, but you gotta, you know, you gotta ease into it. Right. You know? Yeah, that, well, that's very interesting. I mean, I mean, so, you know, we, I've lived here about uh, 14 months now, and I don't think one time I've ever seen him doing anything that somebody with $80,000 a year income couldn't do. Like, it's, mm. he just seems to live a life that seems to be more, more focused on friendships and, yeah. and building, and uh, just, you know, excluding, maybe some behind the scenes or something, but it seems building. like it, yeah. Yeah, you could. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about your story, because, um, you know, even though I consider myself an entrepreneur in a sense that I'll take some risks, you talked about showing up to New York City with only $600 in your pocket and really no idea where you were going to sleep that night or how you were going to survive. And that, to me, is just on a whole different level. I could almost never imagine it. So tell me um, about your history of entrepreneurship and really how you got here. Yeah, well, it sounds impressive on the surface, right? Oh, you, it's a cliche it story. It's scary, yeah. It's, it's scary, but you moved to New York City with $600. You know one person. What are you going to do? There's no, like, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those type of things. Uh, but for me, that was uh, a mantra that I live by is that get, that's getting uncomfortable. And I think that's where growth comes from. Uh, but it's like I'm, six I'm, degrees, though, you know? Six, yeah. Might but, be a few too many. But it's a lot of degrees. But, and I'll tell you how that happened, is that I'm one of those dudes, I'm from small town Michigan. I'm from one of those towns where, it's, you know, people just don't leave. I'm the first in my family to, to go away and, and get a degree and get a graduate degree and do things that, you know, wasn't fathomable when I was a young child. Uh, thank goodness to different allies of glory I experienced in my life and mentors, I realized I could do a few different things. Uh, so when you hear like, oh, dude moved to New York City with $600, oh, I, I can do that too. I also tell people, slow down. What people don't know is that I slowly, slowly built up to getting uncomfortable. After my freshman mm, year of college, right. I worked at a factory. I wanted to be like my dad. I worked in a factory back home. I realized that wasn't for me. Uh, after my sophomore year, I got an internship in Detroit, Michigan. Now, for me, Detroit, Michigan might as well have been like Rome. Like, that's, a, that, <laughs> that's like, I'm from a town where we like to drink Budweiser Red, go fishing, and shoot stuff. That's how we yeah. roll. Um, after that, I got an internship in Orlando, Florida with Walt Disney World, where all of a sudden, this dude who got on a plane for the first time in his life got to interact with people from all across the country and from all across the world. That led to me studying abroad, et cetera. So, for me, moving to New York City with $600 was was just a logical next step because I had been slowly building up and getting uncomfortable. Factory, right. Detroit, Orlando, studying abroad in Europe, and then, and then New York City. If I would have, I think, tried to make that big leap prior to doing all of that, I'm not sure how much success I would have encountered. So I like to tell people, like, just ask yourself today, what's that one step that you can take to get a little bit uncomfortable? Is that writing a blog post? Is that starting a company? Is that buying a ticket to visit that city you're considering moving to. Is that, yo, if you got a crush on somebody, you. right? Right, you that just girl, gotta go, that girl, go that talk that to her, girl yeah. Shows up that you've been thinking about Buy for a long time. Buy her a drink, time. that's what you gotta do. That moment when you get on, your butterflies are coming, you're like, yo, this is my moment, I'm gonna go say, what's up, girl? <laughs> How you, how, how you doing? Don't ever do that, by the way. Um, but those moments when you, for me, those moments of the heart beating fast, the, the, the sweaty upper lip, the, those butterflies, for me, that means I'm doing something doing right. right. If right. I don't feel that for a while, Jinx. something is off. 
Okay, so let's talk about, uh, we're coming, we're starting to wrap up with time, but I really want to talk about uh, the fact that you're a co-founder of Ignition Labs. Um, what is Ignition Labs? The Ignition Lab is awesome, first and foremost. Uh, but Ignition Lab is something that my partner, Bassam Tarazi, and I came up with. Uh, it's wonderful that in places like Vegas, New York, the Bay, LA, et cetera, Austin, New Orleans, there are all these incubators and accelerators for companies. Uh, but there are a lot of independent professionals out there, people that don't work for companies who are freelancers, who are independent contractors, who have nine to fives, but they're building their five to nines. And what we wanted to do was to create an, an environment, a space to not co-work, but instead to co-create, co-solve, and be part of a team so where you can come bring your ideas and flesh them out in a community environment. Right, right. So we started last year with an accelerator for six people in, in Nicaragua. We're doing that again in, in November. But what I'm really excited to announce is that we're going to begin doing one-day ignition labs for these independent professionals where they, they can come build their side hustle, oh, build cool. their yeah. projects. We're going to start next month in, in New York City and take it across the country, and we really hope to do an event here in Las Vegas. And so these will just be like one-day mixed it up, kind of throw yourself one day in, and get yourself one degree un uncomfortable. And get uncomfortable, yeah, you bring right? your idea, we're going to flesh it out, figure out what's great about it, decide your next steps, surround you with allies of glory, be part yeah, of a team, I like that. take that center good. stage, don't go about it by yourself in a coffee shop, don't go about in a co-working space where you're just staring at your computer, don't sit in your cramped apartment by yourself, no, find people who support you and who encourage you. Right, do your startup weekend, then come here and like flesh out the, the ideas, right? Get exactly. it a little bit more ready for market. But it's a startup weekend for the individual, that yeah. person who's a freelancer, independent contractor. Uh, you, uh, yeah. People who come to Ignition Lab, odds are they are not building an app. They are not building a technology company. They're not going to say we're disrupting something. No, dude, I just want to build this service-based business that I really love. And I think in this economy, we've forgotten a lot about those independent individuals, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's why you said Drinkboard, our sponsor. They're just bringing that human element back to it, just that yeah. kind of. So, all right, well, uh, anything else you want to point them towards? Um, the lab's website or yeah you www the, do you need to say www anymore yeah, yeah. it, it so. gets them prepared you yeah. know you, then they know it's coming http yeah colon, yeah colon backslash, double slash, backslash w <laughs> uh, whack, whack. it's simple to find the ignition lab.com we begin doing events next month in new york city and we'll be in your city sometime extremely soon if you want to see us there just give us a shout we'll come see you and before you transition to your goodbye which i know you're going to do yeah that's this dude that's is what the, that's what the notes say, you know? Dylan is dope with this. Ah, thank you, thank you. It's like I'm getting interviewed the other way. Yeah, I can I You just can can't let like, go of that interview skill. I can flip the script when yeah. I, you oh, have yeah. no idea. I'll be crying I'll there in a minute, yeah. right? From a psychologist. I pride myself on being able to make people cry. <laughs> In a, you know, as an interviewer, not in a, I'm, I, that didn't sound good. In a real healthy way, that's, that's yeah, one ended. degree of crying. Yeah. We'll get in there. Okay. All right, well, what, you have one more thing you want to say before we cut out? Are you I, good? I think I'm, I'm happy, man. I just, <laughs> these people are, I wish they could, this, these people are great. Well, you did a great job, and thanks for coming for Catalyst Week, and thanks for coming to visit us at the Downtown Podcast. We really appreciate it. Thank you. A round of applause. Hashtag.